Hey, and welcome to the third episode of Trust the Process, the show where I take you behind the scenes with me to show you how real design projects are made. On the previous episode, I've presented the strategy presentation to my clients, got an approval and kickstarted the website project. On this episode, we're actually gonna get down and design the brand update and the website. this project, I wanted to collaborate with another designer. The main reason was that due to tight deadlines, I wanted to share the workload and have somebody help me on the brand identity while I work on the website. But another reason is that I always think that having multiple creative people work on the same project usually generate better results. I've approached Radim Malinik of Brand New. He's a London-based designer and I got to know him while he was speaking in Off Tel Aviv. I really like his visual approach and I was curious to see how he would approach solving the brand identity. We had a challenge though. It was the week before Christmas and Radim had only two days to work on the project, try to come up with an update to the logo and a general visual direction for the brand while I work on the wireframes. Then, because in Israel we don't actually take time off for Christmas, I would take on and complete the brand identity project myself. To kick off the collaboration, I've created a brief for Radim to try to capture everything that I learned about the client so far and the decision that we made during the strategy phase. When he was ready to work, I went back to try to work on the wireframes for the website. When working on wireframes, my first step is to initially sketch them out in my notebook. When that is done, I move them to the computer to a higher fidelity wireframes and try to write the actual text. In this project, I used Figma. It was actually the first time that I used Figma. And the reason was that I wanted to collaborate on the text together with my clients. See, I don't believe that working with lorem ipsum text is really useful. You can't really do a design work when you don't understand the real content of the text that you're designing for and also how long it should be. So I've created the wireframes in Figma and then shared them together with my clients so they'll be able to go in and edit the text. The first version of the text I write myself, it's part of a service that I do, but my clients always iterate and refine the text that I write there. One of the main contents in the new website is going to be the vulnerability bios. This is one of W's new offers where girls go to a one day workshop, rewrite their bios and have their photo taken by a professional photographer. They wanted to show this and the variety of girls on their website. And so I thought that kind of using a Pinterest like grid would be a great way to show them. Now, when it comes down to showing the actual bio, we took inspiration from a website that we saw. It was a website that told the story of people in Chile that disappeared during the Pinochet area. And we thought it was really powerful how they use kind of a full frame of an image showing the face, you know, big, looking at the eyes while reading the story of the person. And we wanted to reuse this experience on our website. Apart from that, the website also has to include the product pages, which are the different experiences and offers that W has. On the brand front, Radin's first step was to share a mood board where he explored different types of designs, color schemes and typographic treatment based on the brief and also his creative intuition. That really helped us to facilitate a discussion around which direction we want to go in and we understood that we really want to go in a bold direction and create a simple powerful symbol. Radim then sent me his first ideas for the updated logo. Now, W's original logo was based on a butterfly, which they felt represented the transformation that women go through when joining one of their experiences. They really liked the butterfly icon, even though they knew that his current styling was a little bit cliche or too girly. And we were thinking how we can work with that symbol, but try to make it a little bit more abstract and powerful. Looking at Radim's idea, there was one in particular that caught my eye for its simplicity. It was the combination of the letters D and U. I started playing around with it in Illustrator and when I turned it around, it took on a new meaning. By changing the proportions just a little bit, all of a sudden, it looked like an abstract version of a butterfly and also kind of like holding of hands and maybe even an upside down heart. I thought this could be a really great fit for the brand. 
Bradham also thought that the DNU symbol was the best approach, but he honestly didn't really like me rotating the symbol. But since I was working more closely with the client and I really felt like this could be a good fit for them, I decided to go with it anyway. Bradham then took my wireframes and started to design them using the new visual approach. Things were starting to take shape. I finalized the design over in Figma and also designed the rest of the pages. The design was now ready and it was time to start building the presentation to present and pitch this new idea to the team. Even though designing the presentation is often overlooked by designers, this is one of the crucial steps in making sure that the presentation and the adoption of the new idea is going to be successful. For many clients, it's really difficult to see a new design for the first time just because they lived with the old design for so long. That's why you have to build a presentation and sell the idea very slowly, step by step. Another key to making a presentation a success is showing many variations of the brands. So even if you were not asked to actually design a t-shirt or a bag, showing that in your presentation helps the client to imagine how the brand is going to extend and live beyond what you're working on at the moment. The day has arrived and I'm going to present a new design to the team. But due to unexpected circumstances, one of the key founders could not make it to the meeting and I have to present only to one of them. Uh, okay, so let's get started. So just like the recap of the, where we were last time that we met, so we, we were talking about turn on your wildness. It's yes. kind of like the big idea. And mm -hmm. in general, we were talking a lot about wild. Um, and then in terms of kind of value proposition, we were talking about transforming your life with the support of a sisterhood of wild, ambitious, helpful women. Um, leaders. More, yeah. Helpful women leaders. Leaders, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is actually, I think, this more in, the, in terms of the story, like global community that turned women leaders all around the world, who want to support a strong sisterhood when pursuing more out of life. Again, wording, we, we can still iterate on that, but those were kind of like the uh, main ideas. Yeah, the main kind of thoughts and people names. Yeah, cover. exactly. Um, and so in terms of what we had right now, what you said was that it's like the vibe is a little bit too happy, happy, and doesn't like show the other side like the yeah, too sides. naive, too yeah. light, yeah. Exactly. Um, and that we need to create kind of a, at least a web experience that is more transformational. Like you feel something, it changes yeah. you when you uh, interact with it. Um, and also you said that like the butterfly is a good symbol for the transformation. Let's try to keep it if possible, um, but let's rethink. Like let's open up, but if possible, okay. let's keep it. Let's keep it. So, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, here, so I'm, I'm just going to take you through the process of how I like uh, thought about this and kind of like uh, it's basically showing you the process of playing with the euro from okay. playing around like, until I got to the solution where um, I think that we have something which is good and it's a good fit for the brand. So I started off just um, playing with like double and U, like looking for the, the like letters that can maybe represent this. Mm -hmm. So I was playing with D and U. Um, and was looking for like really geometric shapes, something that can be like turned into something maybe, um, you know, a symbol or something that can be iconic out of this. And then I said, okay, actually we can use this shape twice because, you know, if you turn it around, it might look like a D and mm -hmm. a U. Um, and then start playing around with them saying, okay, if I put them one on top of another, what would, what would that be? Um, and I was playing around with that. I said, okay, that looks interesting. What happens, you know, I was like throwing and turning this around. I'm like, what happens if I turn this around? I'm like, hmm, hey, this is interesting. Um, because besides like kind of like abstract letters, I think this can also be like the butterfly where, you know, the, the big wings on top. But yeah. this can also be like maybe holding on the hands. And I think there's actually a lot of things in the symbol which I thought were like, hey, this looks like something I don't know, tribalistic, something like powerful, but yet so simple that, you know, a kid can draw it on the sand with, with a finger. Um, and I was like, okay, That's so let's, yeah, yeah let, let's, let's see how that would work. And so I put it up uh, together with the typography, which again, the focus right now, we had kind of two words, double and you, and I was like, no, let's try to make a name out of this, but put the focus on you. So mm -hmm. let's bold that, but use a typeface, which is kind of like, um, narrow and, and that makes it a bit more kind of a little bit in your face and, and um, I wouldn't say aggressive but a little bit kind of like in your face um, and I thought this 
this can be, uh, this really looks interesting to me and I think can be really a good fit. And you've mentioned um, a couple of times that maybe we can use red and black for, for the colors. Yeah. So I started to um, use that and, and say, let's, let's use those things as tools and see if that could work, right? Mm -hmm. um, we can maybe put the shape in a color and, or put it in a circle to create some kind of a badge out of it. We can use like the, the, the condensed typeface to create kind of like posters or a very uh, strong typographic language um, that can be really recognizable. Um, maybe we can make, again, kind of a symbol out of this, put the term ternary or um, wildness in kind of a circle and make this kind of a badge out of this that maybe can, like people would want to wear or something like that. Mm -hmm. And also looking at the type, like I was looking, hey, W, if you just uh, take off a few letters in the middle, it actually is do you, which I also thought, hey, it's actually a part of like the vibe of the brand, like, hey, you can, like, be yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and like having all those elements together, I thought this can like really turn into something that is really um, powerful. And, and like I was trying to imagine how would this look like in real world and, and in context. Um, so maybe on a t-shirt or maybe on kind of a bag that you get when you get into the retreat, maybe right, use right. the type to, yeah, to say something like, mm -hmm. hey, future you awaits here and use the you in, in all kinds of like, uh, the ways that we communicate with, with the community, um, you know, uh, our big conferences. Yeah, conferences <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, so, those were the tools that I thought could really work well um, for the brand. Mm -hmm. so let me show you how this actually looks like on the website. So, um, so this is the hero section where um, we just open up the, the website. This screen is super huge, so it's not full screen, but basically it would be something like full screen yeah. um, and have kind of like uh, changing portraits in the background, mm -hmm. uh, maybe open up a video here. Um, then we have here, this is kind of like, again, the, a little bit about who the brand is, why we're doing what we're doing, um, about our retreats and about the workshops. And then down here, um, start showing the content. So the idea here was kind of contrast the like big bold text with a text that is a little bit more kind of like delicate, but yeah. focuses on the name. And then when when you hover over an image, it gives you a little bit more uh, information about like who is this person, a little bit of snippet out of the bio, and then mm -hmm. you can click it and um, and go read the bio. But wow, yeah, they, the, oh my god, these these pictures are fucking amazing. <laughs> Okay, so if you click on the event, you get to the bio. <laughs> oh my god, I need to take a picture of this. No, no, I'm not the, no, 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 but it needs yeah. to be for me because this is when I'm like, this is the wow moment. <laughs> no, this, this is what we needed. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I, I thought, yeah, this, this can be really impactful, like showing the full face, putting the story on top of it, maybe even navigating uh, back and forth between stories, just yeah. like in kind of a story experience. Um, of course, you can share it, and then, you know, all the regular stuff. This is the band, because I like, this has a, I think this that, makes you feel something. Yeah, I, I think that... Again, we're going to talk about the website separately, but I think that this is going to be the entry point for a lot of people anyway. Um, so, because if people are going to share this, then this is like most people are maybe going to hit this page before they hit the front page. Um, That's how it usually works when you have blogs and, and stuff like that. So, something to consider. Um, okay. Let's see what else? Wait, we didn't oh, finish. Okay. Um, all right, so this is the retreat stage. Um, again, maybe a video, um, a little bit about the retreat, some testimonials. The icons I've changed into kind of a more uh, line-based icon that's yeah, really more vectorial. To, yeah, more vectorial, but can like work well with with the lines of, of the logo. Mm -hmm. um, see. What else we have here? The about page, um, who we are and what we stand for. It's kind of our story. And here, I thought this is open to debate, like whether you know this takes into your bios or it takes into a specific different kind of like um, story. I think that because this here, I think that okay, this is an important thing because. So let's not let's leave that to the let's leave this to the end. Let's okay. let's finish the section yes. and then we'll discuss like the website. Okay. 
Um, but basically, you, I think that you get the vibe, the icons here are yeah. like um, same language. So this is, um, yeah, okay, oh so, this is, so this is the website. Okay, let's go back here and uh, continue and talk about social media for a second. Okay. Um, so social media, basically you've asked me for a template, right? And, uh, but I think that template in general can be maybe too boring in the sense that it's too repetitive. But I think that right now, if you have kind of the toolbox of the color, the typeface, and, and like how you work with images, you can create like multiple images and kind of a stream that is can be versatile and not boring, but yet you know recognizable. When you see something, you think yeah. you know um, this can work well. And also, I think that the symbol works as if you look at like the profile image. It's it's a strong symbol that is unique enough, you know, to you know to to build meaning into long term and very recognizable. Um, okay, so basically, this is it in terms of. The brand, I think what we need to discuss is like the symbol, the color, the, the typographic language um, and how it applies in the website. Then we can like dive deep into the website and, and see like, but I think the, 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 the prior question is how do you feel about this like as a visual representation of it? I mean, the more I will start voting uh, all what it comes yes. to me, and then we will focus on certain things. Yeah. The more I see, the more it feels good. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to represent only what I wish for the brand. Yeah. Okay? I know, as I told you before, like I'm less attached to the past. So for me, the butterfly is okay that it's not there. Okay? okay. But I know that it's a sensitive issue for others. Okay. If it's up to me entirely, I'm like, okay, this, this is very, very interesting. I think that it represents more like the Hazak strong, you know, in your face kind of a feeling. And less the, oh, we're here to make you feel better, right? Or yeah. um, we're here privileged women who don't need it because they're like, <laughs> yeah. So I think that um, I like that. So the meeting was a great success and Steffi really liked the design, but then something unexpected happened again. Narkis, the founder who couldn't make it, called us and asked that we present it to her online during a video call. Now this is really not ideal and I really don't like doing this, but we honestly had no other option. We had to get the design approved by the end of the week so that I can get started on developing the website so that we can hit the deadline. So I went ahead and presented online. And it went great. This was actually a surprise to both me and Steffi because we thought Narkis would be so attached to the old design that she would have a hard time approving the new design. But she loved it. We got an approval and we can move on into the next step of actually developing the website. There is no better feeling than running a successful design presentation and getting great feedback from your clients and they love the new design. This is just an amazing feeling. On the next episode, we're gonna take this design and turn it into a live, fully functional and responsive website. Stay tuned for the next episode. Guys, I'm really excited to hear in the comments what you thought about this episode. I've been working on this series for months now and it's finally out there. Looking forward to hearing what you think. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about my process for web design and resources, check the description for links. And I'll see you on the next episode.